Here at the Temple of Heaven outside Beijing, generations of Chinese have stood at this wall, clapping their hands, listening for the echo from the other end. One can even hear the conversations there. Today, a new form of communication has come to China, the Internet. Traditionally, Chinese people have not been accustomed to communicating from home at night. But with the advent of the Internet, people's habits are changing, especially for students who enjoy the versatility and variety of the system to communicate all over the world. Apparently, the Internet has a great, bright future. Throughout its 5,000-year history, China has absorbed foreign ideas and integrated them into her unique culture. 20th century China is a nation born of revolution, a nation now coming to terms with a global revolution, the Internet. Only six months ago, every email has to go to the United States, circle the globe. Every email, every uh, browsing, but now it's different. In this program, we'll explore the history of the Internet in China, meet the corporations and entrepreneurs who are developing Internet facilities and services, and see how some Hong Kong-based Internet companies are preparing for unification with China. Hello, I'm John Gage. Today's program will examine the Internet in China, the new technologies, the new commercial opportunities, the new developments made possible by a form of communication that has not been accessible to the world before. Joining me is a panel uniquely qualified to discuss these developments, Dean Orville Schell, Dean of the Graduate School of Journalism at the University of California, author of numerous books about China, and Dennis Tsu, Director of Internet and Electronic Commerce at Sun Microsystems. Professor Shell, let me ask you, what is the meaning of the Internet as it enters China at this moment of change? Well, I think it's an extremely important part of a very insular and once quite isolated society opening up to the outside world. Um, and in this sense, uh, the flow of information lies very much at the heart of this new reform era that Deng Xiaoping launched now almost 20 years ago. Dennis, you see the growth of commerce on the Internet exploding in the last year or two. What examples in China of the use of this technology do you think are most promising? Well, John, to answer that question, I think it would be helpful to step back and talk about what the Internet really is, because many of the viewers may not really understand that. The Internet really is a network of computers that would allow a computer anywhere in China to communicate over a network using standard computer languages or protocols to any other computer, whether it be in the United States, in Europe, in Russia, wherever in the world it may be. The application of that network is really twofold, or threefold actually. First is the ability to send and exchange information, typically electronic mail, but perhaps data on a computer experiment or a physics experiment that someone may have run. The second is to using the uh, web technologies or internet technologies that have become more popular recently to really go out and browse information pages, websites that people here in the States are familiar with, but as you were speaking of, really allow people in China to visit the computers of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people around the world, see what they have to say and read that information. And then the third application really being that of conducting business or, or commerce over the internet. All three of those, I think, have unique um, aspects when applied to Chinese culture and society in terms of the ramifications and the potential significance there. Before we examine what direction the Internet can take, let's see how the Internet began in China. China's first link to the Internet was created here at the Institute of High Energy Physics in Beijing. The scientists here needed an email link to colleagues in other countries. 
Professor Xu Rong Shen created the first academic link to Stanford in California. In the past, we put all the data on a tape and shipped it by airplane. Because of the internet, we can directly communicate with America and other parts of the world and send data and software to each other with easy access. In this room, Professor Xu proudly shows us the first email server in China. He's optimistic about the internet in China, but he's also cautious about the net's initial impact. First of all, our culture is different from that of the West. This development needs a gradual transition. It should not be too rapid, otherwise the results may not be good. Another thing is, China's economy is not like the West. Buying a computer and a modem to get on the net is expensive for ordinary families. Some equipment is even too costly for research institutions and universities. The email connection and internet access was so exciting, the Physics Institute made internet service available to influential people in Beijing, with dial-up service through the modems you see here. Out of that dramatic demonstration came the policy that China's first internet service would be managed by the Chinese State Education Commission. In first phase, uh, we uh, set, uh, established the uh, national backbone of CERNET. We connect uh, eight regional network center, over uh, 100 universities, 50,000 students and uh, faculty and research staff connect to uh, CERNET already. Here at Tsinghua University, Professor Wu Qianping is responsible for CERNET, the China Education and Research Network. Phase two uh, started uh, last year. Uh, we try to connect uh, all of the Chinese uh, universities and the uh, institute. But in China, there are uh, thousands of universities and uh, almost 5,000 research institutes. It's a huge uh, community. We have the one-fourth population with the students. When you consider that China's population is 1.2 billion and growing, CERNET, when completed, will become the largest educational and research network in the world. But in its initial stages, there are problems to overcome. The first is language. But the internet is uh, uh, English-based. basic problem is uh, interface. How to share the Chinese character uh, on your computer screen? There are language issues that concern foreigners and Chinese alike. Translation is critical when it comes to domain names, your identity on the internet. In China, they're allocated by this department at CERNET. As in America and elsewhere, they're often subject to heated debate. Back at the Institute for High Energy Physics, Professor Xu sees the internet as a tool to develop human relationships around the world. He's developed a website to present China in cyberspace. I made some homepage, like a China homepage. A China homepage. I call it China Window to, to introduce some information about China. Professor Shell, you see the arrival of this technology in China at a moment when China is undergoing many changes. Who will be the first to use this, and what will be the impact, do you think, of, of this new publishing technology in China? Well, I don't think we've ever seen an example at any time in world history where a society has undergone such high-speed change and such profound change. And uh, the Internet, I, I, I would say, uh, along with all the business it brings, the, the cultural exchanges, um, all of the diversity that it will bring into China is um, probably the, the most profound influence, along with telecommunications, that this country will have to absorb in this process of, of reintegration into the world. Professor Xu, who started this technology as a scientific mode of communication, says we should go slowly, take things gradually. What do you think he means by that? 
Well, I think any system, any society can only take so much change at a time. I mean, it has to evolve. Uh, and I think China has had uh, an experience with the revolution that wasn't entirely successful. It tried to change too rapidly and too precipitously. So I think what Professor Xu is uh, alluding to is the need for China to move at a pace that it can profitably absorb without being tipped off the tracks. And we all know that it's a very high-speed world uh, that the Internet is, is allowing into China. It's a very, it can be a very confusing world. After all, societies need values. They need, they need uh, their own culture. They need many things to hold their balance as they are being assaulted by this uh, incredible glut of information that's now available around the world. Professor Wu talks about the difficulty with the Internet primarily at the moment, an English language medium. Do you see a impediment to its use uh, when Chinese is completely integrated in websites? Do you think there'll be even more of an explosion of use by the segments of, of Chinese society? Oh, I think so. And I think that's actually one of the challenges that a lot of the Internet service providers and the content providers in China today are wrestling with. Again, if you go and, and, and look through the various websites that are up on the net today in China, there are probably a hundred different universities that have websites posted. The vast majority of those may have a title page which has some uh, English characters on it, but once you get past that first page or two, the rest of the content is in Chinese. Um, and I think one of the debates, perhaps, that, that China will have to go through is to what extent do they want to encourage, foster, um, really develop Chinese language, Chinese-only content for the China-only audience versus to what extent do they want to use the Internet and the web to communicate with other countries? The Internet as a tool of science must link thousands of sites. The Internet as a tool of commerce must link millions of sites, and that requires a serious investment in Chinese infrastructure. Everyone agrees that China's telecommunications system must make drastic improvements to meet the needs of her growing economy. And while the number of telephones doubled in a recent five-year period, by the end of the century, there will still be less than one phone for every hundred people, compared to nearly 80 for every hundred in the United States. In the United States, the telecommunications system developed from analog to a more digital network system and then to modern broadband switches. In China, of course, lots of people simply do not have telephones. In a lot of places, there isn't even a telephone network. In one step, we imported fiber optic technology and broadband switches, so it is from nothing to the high-speed broadband network. Michael Wong is president of ChinaNet Infotech, one of the country's major internet service providers. The company was started two years ago with backing from Tsinghua University. In China right now, it's like the early days of the gold rush in the American Wild West. The potential for growth is enormous. The Asia Development Bank estimates that investment in China's telecommunication system will be 20% of the world's total, over $20 billion by the end of the century. And to be able to get into the 21st century with the right infrastructure, internet is very critical. So uh, the Chinese people see that as uh, their roadmap to a very integrated economy uh, in China. Uh, and they definitely see internet uh, not only for education, not only for uh, information sharing, but also as a basis for electronic commerce. Uh, Basically speaking, the government of China is always willing to encourage growth of the economy. I think the major issue here is that no one in China is really clear about how to manage the internet industry, because it's a very new industry. Jasmine Zhang, one of a new breed of entrepreneurs, is president of Info Highway Space, China's only retail network offering service to individuals with computers. As in many countries where issues about what's permissible on the net are being debated, the responsibility for Internet content remains a concern in China. Just like a real highway, you must have regulation. Otherwise, you'd have cars going in all directions and parking anywhere. So the same thing with the Internet. You have to have some regulation. 
As a content provider, Info Highway Space must take responsibility. So do end users who sign a contract with the company. It's a Ministry of Post and Telecommunication, NPT. They, they make the rules, the policies. Um, but at the same time, they want to uh, spin off companies and, and uh, generate revenue to, you know, for their, you know, but so they are profit-driven government organization. MIT graduate Charles Jung returned to China with venture capital backing from America. He runs the Beijing Office of Internet Securities, an international company that provides business information about emerging markets via the Internet. The biggest challenge for Internet technologies in China in the next year is to develop good relationships with the, the appropriate Chinese government uh, organizations. Everything is highly regulated and you don't have a lot of open channel for people to, to market and pro to broadcast. This will uh, be uh, of special value for, for international businesses and, and Chinese businesses uh, to, to reach uh, a certain group of readers. Dennis, do you see China moving ahead rapidly? There's an enormous investment required for communication infrastructure. Is China making that investment? Oh, day by day, John. The current statistics on Chinese investment in their communications and networking infrastructure is truly staggering. They're just pouring fiber cable all over China. And by the end of the century, uh, China will have one of the most modern, if not the most modern in the world, uh, telecommunications infrastructures around. Um, and the uh, possibilities that that allows and, and the bandwidth that that will provide, I think, are uh, quite exciting. Professor Shell, do you think it's possible for China to move very rapidly, not burdened by past investments in old technology? I think, in fact, that's what they're doing. Uh, and in this sense, uh, blankness is a virtue. Uh, as Chairman Mao himself pointed out when he suggested that a blank sheet of paper uh, always had the, the great uh, benefit of being able to be written on in new and interesting ways. Dennis, does the Internet bring new forms of commerce? Does it make new kinds of commerce possible in China? Very much so, John. I think there are actually several different categories of commerce which the Internet will help enable or help energize and, and bring to the market faster. One of them is commerce within China, so that a factory, for example, in Shenzhen can communicate with a, an organization in Manchuria that needs their products, which prior to the Internet may not have known about the existence of this factory. So just internal communications within China. A second one is for Chinese organizations that want to purchase computer equipment from America. They now have, by virtue of the Internet and the web, access to the entire catalog of every manufacturer in the United States, access to the absolute best technology at the absolute best prices, and they can take advantage of that to bring technology into China on a commercial basis. The flip of that is for Chinese organizations to be now able to put their goods on the market to potential consumers, whether they be in America, in Europe, in Southeast Asia, or wherever in the world. Now, there's a change required in, in commercial and in social attitudes. Suddenly, with a new capability, new institutions have to be formed. This is a major difficulty for everyone, I would think, at this moment in Chinese history. How do you see this evolving? Well, the government still is very much involved in the flow of information. So to, 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 to set up a joint venture, to, to, be, uh, to provide Internet access, you have to go through the government it is important to have a partner in the government or, or things don't happen. Uh, and uh, the, the government is now becoming uh, not simply a government, but also a commercial partner for many of the, the, the new ventures that we see transforming China. So the ministries, the Education Commission, the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, uh, the Ministry of Electronics, each are commercial entities as well as governmental entities. They are, in a, in, a, in, a, in a curious way, turning themselves into what we think of as corporations at the same time that they are, are regulating uh, what goes on. It's something that, that Westerners are not so familiar with. And indeed, it is a new kind of a, new kind of, a, of a market, a new kind of a, a, a commercial organization, which the world really is not, has not seen to date. The coming of the Internet can change business. It can create new opportunities. Let's see 
Who's taking advantage of this? In a country whose greatest resources are people, many things are still done the traditional way, by hand. The coming of the internet may not change that. On our visit, we wondered if workers like these would find the appeal of places like this, one-stop internet shops for a new service, China Online. It's like the Ministry of Telecom is building a highway, and we are the transportation company that's providing trucks and goods. And unless the highway is built up, we can't go there and provide all the transportation service. China Online is headquartered here, in Shenzhen, China's new economic zone in the south. No place in the rest of China rivals the consumer goods and entertainment available here. China Online started two years ago. It has 3,000 employees nationwide, 500 here in the Shenzhen head office. We are trying to build a network that's suitable to China's situation. And they're promoting that network with commercials like this. China Online aims to provide a complete online information service with an emphasis on commercial transactions like airline ticketing and banking. But even as China Online rolls out its campaign, the question on everyone's mind here in Shenzhen and around the world is how will Shenzhen's neighbor adapt as the former British colony of Hong Kong goes through the process of reunification with the Chinese mainland. Hong Kong has historically been a commercial gateway to the Chinese mainland. Now, it's an internet gateway. When we went to the Hong Kong offices of China Internet Corporation, they were busy designing a website to commemorate the historic transition. Our product uh, is the CWW, China Wide Web. Uh, for China Wide Web, we take customers inside China that are only commercial entities. In total, we are selling for up 200,000 customers uh, in about uh, three to five years. China Internet Corporation is a subsidiary of Xinhua, the new China news agency. They're in the business of selling information. We provide a communication and information uh, tool to facilitate the business transaction to help our subscribers, our members, uh, to uh, get their product out to the world, inside and outside of China. Also, we provide them electronic uh, mail service, uh, very specialized databases, so that they could uh, search for that area information uh, a particular industry might need. With a population of more than six million on this tiny island, Hong Kong has a technical sophistication which makes it an ideal proving ground for internet-related businesses. The unification of Hong Kong with the mainland provides new opportunity for companies based on the island, like Hong Kong Telecom, which is introducing interactive TV services. We've got a number of different applications like video on demand, music on demand, home shopping, banking there as well. This kind of service, we are planning to launch it for um, the residents in Hong Kong first. And there is always a plan we can do it in other areas, in Asia Pacific and PRC as well. But China's priority remains to build the infrastructure required to support the Internet. We're setting up training centers with universities, with different organizations in China to focus on the technology on Internet so that a vast number of Chinese people has the capability and technology to go build whatever national internet or intranet as they see fit uh, to advance their purpose, whether it's in education, in commerce, or in just basic communication. We've seen the Chinese experience, I think, starting with high energy physics, moving into the academic uh, backbones and suddenly springing into nationwide enterprises, some by different governmental entities. What do you think the directions are that China should take now? Are there any particular roadmaps or guidelines that China should observe? In a certain sense, what China is doing by way of its development over the last 10, 20 years is, is really unparalleled in world history. Uh, and in that sense, there are no roadmaps. I mean, it is a highly centralized uh, government and society 
which is now beginning to decentralize more. It was a very isolated government, which is now beginning to merge with the outside world. We simply don't have any roadmaps for this. It's very, it's very interesting, very exciting, and also uh, it could be quite, quite uh, perilous if it's not managed very carefully. What are the dangers ahead for China? Are there any directions China should take that would en enable it to be a full partner? I think the biggest issue, John, that f is fundamental to every form of commerce, that is fundamental to a lot of the, or really all of the security issues that are related to the internet and, and so forth, has to do with the fundamental concept of trust. And if two parties trust one another, whether it be that if I ship you a good, you will pay me, or if I send you something, I'm not going to send you a virus or a bad piece of software. The fundamental concept of trust, I think, is the most important element of business relationships, human relationships, that um, all these forms of technologies have to build upon. And fundamentally, I think the biggest issue for China um, as a government, as a series of political institutions, as, as a nation dealing with other parts of the world, is to establish that trust relationship. So for the economies of the 21st century, what's developing now in China is worth everyone's time in examining. I think, uh, you know, you, you would ignore China at your peril at this point in history whether you're in business or whatever your field of, of, of endeavor is. Thank you very much. Today we've tried to explore the past and the present of the Internet and examine a bit the directions the Internet will take in China in the next five to ten years. We're seeing an explosion, an explosion brought about by new technology, new commercial and new cultural forms. The Internet is a tool. We're going to watch how China uses this tool.